Hey, it's been a while since I've done a video. I've gotten a lot of new followers. And so for those of you that are new here and aren't aware, um, I do have a book on making a handmade padlock. And a little bit of news, it's not ready yet, but I'm working on a second book. I've been working on it the last three years. It should be done this October. That's my um, goal as of right now. So if you're interested in my first book and you wanna learn some more stuff, keep looking out for that new book. I'll definitely probably make a video about it. Of course, I always post everything on my Instagram, um, but just to give you a little information. The main thing that book's going to be about is this type of padlock, which is called a half heart padlock. Um, this is a braised body padlock, whereas the first book is a rivet construction. So uh, there is more than just this padlock in the second book. It's going to go over um, making keys, um, some basic warding, and a little bit more work on the the lock from the first book to make that a little bit more advanced. So there's a lot more information, it's about twice as big. Um, it is gonna be a more advanced book than the first book, but if you're interested in learning more about that or finding out when it's available, make sure to um, follow along with everything so you can get updates on that. So I've been working on this key and I wanted to do a quick video to kind of show a little bit of the process of cutting the slots in the bit that'll interact with the ward. Um, there's a few ways you can do this, but I'm going to sort of show the traditional way. I also have a new tool that I've never used before, so I kind of want to talk about that tool a little bit. Uh, again, sort of what I'm doing is researching sort of these processes of how these things were made. So that also includes like the tooling and trying to use those, troubleshoot them. You know, there's nobody really that I know of I can ask a lot of these questions. So it's a lot of figuring stuff out on my own, sort of finding what I can and then trying them out, figuring out kind of how they work. Um, or how they work for me. So even I may use them slightly differently than they're intended to be used. Um, but part of that's because I don't necessarily know all of how they were used and it's, it's me again figuring that stuff out. So the new tool that I have is this little clamp that goes in the vise. And this is used for holding the key for when you're cutting the slots. I recently learned about this, I don't remember what book it was from, but there was a, a drawing of um, this tool, so I kind of printed it out full scale and tried to make myself um, the closest copy that I could. One difference is that in one of these little ledges here, the original one, it has a round um, trough in it, I guess that the stem of the key would sit into. I didn't include that in mine. Um, a couple reasons. One, I wanted to sort of try this thing out first and see how it's going to work. That stem of the key would fit into that trough and that would change the angle the key sits in there a little bit. But I didn't want to put it in there because you can only put one size in. So I thought if I put one radius trough in there, it's not going to fit for say a larger key or even a smaller key really. So that would have set the key down further on one side. Now one way I can fix that is to bring the key up on the other side. I can put a little piece of scrap metal under there or something to, to adjust it. But I want to sort of use it this way first and see how that kind of works. I can always add that little trough in later if I find that I need it. Here's an example of an antique key and you can see the slots in there. And the first one you want to do is this plunge cut down the middle. Um, I've got mine marked out and that's easy enough just to hit with a hacksaw and then file it to true it up, get rid of the, the saw marks and whatnot. Right now with filing this, I'm just making sure that this slot is straight up and down, even parallel sides, trying to get rid of any saw marks that there might be. Uh, it may need to be opened up wider to fit the lock, 
but for right now I need that because once I start cutting those slots or, uh, perpendicular to this, that's going to allow clearance for the material I'm cutting out to, to move, but I'll have to file this more anyways. <laughs> once you have this plunge cut in there, the first one to cut is this slot down here, that's called a collar ward, and you need that to be able to start to rotate the key inside the lock to pick up the location of what other um, slots you need to have. So the first thing we're going to try is cutting that one out in the new tool. Again, I haven't tried the tool, so we'll see how that goes. So I have these little, I use basically like a cape chisel and you just want to start slowly taking out a little material. So hopefully you can see there's another set of wards right here and I need to pick up that location for those. The one on this side's broken, uh, but there's enough there I can find the location. I like to use Sharpie to find the location of stuff. So I rubbed a little bit on the key bit and I'm just marking. Location. So I don't know if you can see on the key there I've got the um, Sharpie mark and there's like rough little scribe marks for me to sort of pick up where those slots need to be cut. So we got a pretty good start on 
that second slot. Uh, a lot of times I like to get it uh, pretty far, but also to a point where I can get a needle file in there and finish opening that up. And so after lots of filing and chiseling, hopefully you can see there how it interacts with the, the slots interact with the wards. That allows it to come up here. Function the bolt.